First off, we're glad each one of you have joined us. Um, this is called a district chair orientation. For some of you, it'll be news that you've heard before. For some of you, it'll be news you've never heard. Hopefully, most of you are in between. You've heard some of it. You haven't heard all of it. Um, just look at it as a refresher. Uh, and that's exactly what we want to do is refresh you. And there will be some things we cannot cover in 60 minutes. And so you probably will have questions at the end and we'll be glad to help you answer those questions uh, along the way. Uh, first off, uh, who are we? Uh, what in the world is a CART fund? Uh, most of you have probably heard the story uh, of Roger Ackerman, our founder. Um, he and his wife, Deanie, were caring for her mother, his mother-in-law, who had Alzheimer's. And during that care period, he couldn't find any cure and could find very few people who were actually looking for a cure. And his most frustrating moments were figuring out how much money we really were not spending on research for Alzheimer's at the time. Um, and so once the funeral was over for his mother-in-law, he went to his club with a, with a um, proposal for a project. And therein was born the CART Fund. Now, while he was still caring for his mother-in-law, he, he had lunch with a banker. And the banker told him that in the course of a year, a billion dollars in change changed hands. So if Roger could do something with change, there might be an opportunity for success. And so when he pitched the project to his club, the project was Coins for Alzheimer's Research Trust. And the idea was have members of the Rotary Club of Sumter come to lunch on Monday, empty their purses in their pockets of change, let the club accumulate the change, and we give it away in the form of a research project. And so officially, uh, CART was born in May of 1996. And the Rotary Club of Sumter pitched it to the district, the district bought into it. It took four years to collect $100,000. Now that's a lot of nickels and dimes and quarters, but in 1999, they gave away their first grant for $100,000 to Dr. Alan Levy. Two years later in 2001, they gave a, a $250,000 grant. And from that moment on, we've given a grant or multiple grants every single year. And essentially, that's who we are. We're a, we're a seed funding organization. We provide grants to researchers to prove their hypothesis. And most of them go on to get additional funding from other folks. In fact, most of them go on to get millions and millions of dollars in research money from other folks because we help them prove their hypothesis. And the idea is we believe that the cure for this thing is gonna come from somebody with out of the box thinking. Not somebody who's just following the train and doing the same thing over and over again, but somebody with a new idea. And so that's what Card Fund's all about. We fund new ideas to try to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Um, we operate as a 5013C and we can honestly tell you, and you can honestly tell your clubs members, that 100% of what you donate to CART goes to research. Now, we have a second 5013C called tra TRAC, and that one funds the administration. So they're separate. But administration is very, very small for, for CART. Uh, we, we fund banking fees and website fees and portal fees and printing costs, and that's about it. So 100% of what you donate to CART actually goes to research, and we want to keep it that way, and that's the whole idea. We are governed by an executive committee, um, but if there's, a, if there's a topic that needs approval by the entire CART fund, each district that's giving has two votes. You as a district chair get one vote, and your DGN gets one book. And so come May, when we have our annual meeting, any, any topics that require the approval of the entire body, those are the voting members. 
And in between the annual meeting, we have an executive committee that tries to keep us out of trouble and tries to keep us focused. We are interested in a grassroots organization. We're not interested in a top-down organization. You guys are the most important folks in CARP. You really are, because you provide us the link to the givers of the donations. You provide us the link for the education of the donors. And you provide us with feedback from those folks in terms of what they think we should do to change. And so we appreciate every one of you and we want to serve you as you serve this organization. And at this point, I'm gonna pass it on to Terry and, and Michelle to talk to us about the portal. through the cart portal and do that in the form of the manual that I believe you have all received. This is just recently redone, updated slightly, not a lot. And this is the cart district chair manual. Um, this is the login page. And what I want to remind you of here is that you can do this either of two ways. If somebody knows their DACTV login, they can simply come in and create a cart user login from that using the blue button. They put their DAC username and password in, click the blue button, and they're automatically in the uh, cart portal as an identity. Now, <clears throat> What that means is if they change their login on the DAC side, it will change, of course, their login on the cart side, but it recognizes the same token. So on the same machine, that will be seamless. If you change your DAC login and then on that same machine, go right over to the cart portal, uh, that'll work just fine. On the other hand, this doesn't get in anybody's way. If they don't want to do it that way, they can do it like you do on any other online uh, store type site. You create, you click the uh, lighter blue button, create an account. And of course, then you have to tell us everything about yourself because we weren't able to get that from DACDV. So you tell us your address, your name, uh, your phone number, and your email address and so forth. And uh, we create a cart user ID for you and allow you, of course, to choose your own password. <clears throat> the Primary mode of processing checks is through electronic funds transfer. That's uh, for two reasons. One, because it's slick and easy, and the other, because it's cheap. It costs us about 25 cents for a transaction via an EFT. So it's actually cheaper than mailing a check uh, by a factor of half. And so you do that as a cart chair, as a district cart chair, you have the ability to make contributions on behalf of any club or any person in your district. So let's walk through that. If you get a check by mail from one of your clubs, of course, our suggestion is the first thing you do is communicate back to that club that, hey, I'll deposit this one for you, but I'm a volunteer too. And with exactly the same amount of effort, you could uh, enter these checks in the cart portal and nobody else would have to touch it. So see if you can push this work back on the clubs because that's what we were really trying to do was make it easy, make it quick and make it seamless for the club to not only make a contribution, but it does all the posting at the same time. But if that's not the case, if you've got a, if you've got a check in front of you, you can try to process that check via EFT, meaning you can just on the back of it, right, deposit it and put it over, you know, in a shoebox so that if you need to come back to it, you could maybe write the date of the deposit uh, that you ran the transaction. So you start with make a contribution uh, just as if you were doing it for yourself. But then if it's for another individual, if it's a personal check, we're gonna assume that's coming out of their own bank account and their own wallet. So we wanna tag that to the individual. So you do that, you pick that person in this first box up here at the top. So it, it's searchable, meaning that if they're already in the cart portal for some reason, you can find them by last name. And if that's not the case, then there's an orange button right next to it where you can create a new profile for that person. And of course, chances are in zone 33, at least most of zone 34, uh, they'll be in DACDB, so you can create that profile on the fly. 
And of course, then you can uh, use that for future deposits if you happen to get them from that same person. Uh, there's no login required to that because of course it's controlled by their DAC login. And uh, obviously if they don't have a DAC login, you can create also uh, on this uh, in section 4.1, a couple pages from now, you can create a new user from scratch. Now, if you create a new user, of course, then we know their club, we know their district because you'll fill all that in at that time. Um, <clears throat> the page defaults, on the other hand, if you do nothing, it defaults to a club contribution because this thing was invented for clubs to be able to post their cart contributions in the forms of change in the bucket directly. So if you simply open up, make a contribution, it will default to a club contribution, but it will default to your club. So if you're uh, processing a check for a different club, not yours, then you pick their uh, club name from the dropdown if it's just a club contribution. And then um, you simply move on from there. If it happens to be a district contribution, occasionally a district will run a, you know, pints type fundraiser or maybe have a, a silent auction at a district conference or something like that, in which case then it'd be just tagged to the district, not to a particular club or person. So you have all those options on this make a contribution page. So what you're doing is you're taking the check in front of you and acting for the sender as if they had entered the check and entered the EFT in the cart portal, which is what we would have liked them to do in the first place. Now, there are a couple of cautions here. Uh, EFT will not work on institutional checks, meaning if you've got a check that was drawn on a bank from the bank itself, a brokerage account, an IRA, anything that says Schwab or you know Wells Fargo or whatever on it, that's not going to work. Any kind of a trust check, those bank, those checking accounts will not clear an EFT. They're they're secured against that. So in that particular case, then we need to deposit the check, which is the way cart chairs did business forever. And you have deposit slips, and you make out a deposit slip and deposit that check to the cart bank account at Wells Fargo. All well and good, the money gets into the cart bank account, but we have no idea who or where it came from. So that's this next step, which is called a manual contribution. And to accomplish that, now we're not going to move any money. We're just posting a contribution to the portal so that the accounts will balance on the backside. And to manually uh, run a contribution, you go over on this left navigator down to administration, and there's a um, a link that says contributions. When you open that page, then there's add a manual contribution up here at the top right hand corner. So when you click on that, then you have the opportunity to choose the club, the district, the person, et cetera, do all the same things. But what we're doing now is we're not moving any money. We put the money in the bank. What we're doing now is we're informing the cart portal of what that deposit actually was. So it's two different processes, whether you're running the check through as an EFT, in which case you don't do anything else with it. You just make a note on the back of it, throw it in your shoebox just in case you need to come back to it later. If on the other hand, you're actually depositing the check, meaning that the money is going to move from their bank to Cart's bank by virtue of the banking system. But what we need to know is who did it come from? How much was it? Who does it get credited to? And so that's what this manual contribution process is about. And really simple, again, you pick the club, the district, et cetera, uh, whether it's a club district or personal contribution, and you're pretty much done. Okay, then um, we talked about adding these new users, and that's a pretty easy process. You simply um, start typing the, uh, you start typing the person's last name, and those will pop up. So for example, if I typed uh, M-O-R, I see uh, a Moran, a Morgan, uh, and a Morrington in various different clubs uh, within, and, but these are people that are in DACDB. So they'll pop up and you know they'll tag them to their corresponding Rotary Club and we'll know all that. On the other hand, you can fill in all the blanks, but do be sure and fill in the district, the club name and so forth, Otherwise, will not be able to credit the club with this person's contribution. Now, 
every now and then you get a club that didn't get the memo and you need to send them some instructions. So we've made this really easy here. And what we want you to do is not send them this manual. This manual is for district chairs. They can't do most of the things that are on this page. So don't send them the manual. Just copy from your PDF. Just copy these four steps. Go to My Cart Fund. If you're a DAC user, log in that way. Click Make a Contribution. And if you have trouble, contact your district cart chair. That would be you or support at mycartfund.org with questions. That's it. That's the entire user manual for the club user. Then, of course, as you know, we've got a, a series of reports that are available. And the district reports are over here on the right-hand side. You click Reports on the Navigator. This page opens up. And the uh, CART Club Management Report will be the report that you use the most commonly. But there's also now a transaction-style report called the Contribution History, which you also have available to you. And if you're looking, searching for a contribution, or maybe a contribution got posted just, say, to a district rather than getting posted to the correct, correct club, the correct person, you can do some troubleshooting that way. Obviously, if you have trouble figuring something out, support at mycartfund.org is your fallback. Now, the club, the clubs can see the, their club reports, but and they can also see other clubs in the district, but they can't see anything outside the district. And of course, the same login for the club user, same login um, provides them access to the appropriate reports. Um, we'd like you to support and answer questions to the extent you can. If you get, uh, if you get stumped, why? Refer it to support at mycartfund.org and, and any of several friendly people will respond to that and uh, help people one-on-one. -on -one. Now, we are encouraging direct contributions from members. Uh, this is sort of like a Rotary strategy called Rotary Direct in the Rotary Foundation, meaning that if we can get individual users in clubs to sign up for a card account and even better, sign up for an individual recurring contribution, that is a real key to success. If we could just get people to give us literally their pocket change out of their checking account, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, $50 a month, that sort of thing, uh, we could really build, uh, really build CART's income stream. And then finally, in the category of user administration, you can look up the users on the uh, left-hand navigator down at the bottom, there's an administration link, and you can look up the users and figure out for example, their, um, you, you can figure out their user access level. If, for example, somebody uh, came into the CART portal as a level one user, meaning just a member, they're trying to function as a, as a club treasurer, you can upgrade them to a level four so they can do those, uh, so those uh, club-wide functions. Now, what I want to do now is hand it over to my um, uh, ABLE uh, CART support assistant, and that is Michelle. Uh, Michelle Garashi Ellick has been uh, uh, sort of understudying all this and does a great job. She answers 80 to 90 percent of the support questions that come in, and I surely appreciate that. And she's written up some best practices here that I will just scroll through as she kind of walks through explaining those to you. So I know Terry went quickly through that because we only had 15 minutes and I'm just going to review some practices. First of all, be clear that you can sign into the card portal and make sure that you're level six. And prior to this meeting, I went through and every district card chair that was listed is now a level six. So I've taken care of that for you. Um, rotary card chairs should be a level four. If you need help with that, let me know. But before you talk with anybody about the portal, please make sure that you can sign in. Encourage CART club chairs to forward their contributions through the portal monthly. What happens is we're finding that there are clubs that come to like the end of the year and didn't send their money in. Clubs come and say, you know, I don't know why I didn't make it through the awards. Um, if they send them in monthly or at the very least quarterly, um, when it comes to the end of March, when the card fund chooses how much money they're going to have to give away at grants, that money will be in the portal and it will be deposited. Once we go to the end of the card year, which is June 30th, which is fine as well, then we give our awards, but encourage your card chairs or your treasurers to put their money in their bank as often as they can, because they can just do it 
through the portal. I've spoken with many people on the phone. I encourage you to have your checks ready to enter the portal before you sit down and do anything. Because once you start and start to put some information in, if you leave that portal, when I go in the next day, I see incomplete transactions. And then I send people notices and they say, oh, I wasn't ready. I didn't have the information with me. So encourage you to be ready to put the information in. Also, another challenge we have is, and I do it as well, place great attention when you enter the routing numbers and the account numbers. Because that is a sign that sometimes they come back because you reversed a number um, and inadvertently, but it does happen. Also, as Terry went through it, on the second page, when you fill out the routing number and the account number, on the right-hand corner, it tells you how much is going to be taken out of the account. If you take one minute to check that, you will not have $1,000 go in when $100 should have gone in. So take your time, make sure that information is correct. Terry also mentioned that bank checks, money orders, brokers accounts need to be deposited manually in the bank. On your deposit slip, please put your district number. It is important that the district number be by the name and address so that when Angus and um, Johnny get the receipts, they know which district it came from. Go into the manual, go into the portal and put it in as a manual contribution. I also recommend, recommend that when you make a deposit of a check into the bank, take a copy of that check. Please, if you take it with your phone or you can copy it with your, um, if you have a copier at home, it's easier to get back for us to work it through than to have to go through lots of checks and see where um, what that check number was or what it was about. Um, once you put, Terry says, you know, write them on the back boy. What I do is I take my checks, I staple them to a piece of paper, I enter the dates, and then once a month, familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with the reports. Run the report monthly. Check that the contributions that you process went incorrectly. You can look and see that Mary Smith or um, Mary Jo gave you another $100 that you didn't know all about. So make sure that you go through the reports, look at the reports. And then after a month, what I do is I write void on across the check. So I hold on to it just in case there's problems in the future though. But the report is a great place to see what's going on in your district. See who's making donations that you didn't know about. A big deal, I'm a fundraiser, always say thank you. In any communication you give regarding contributions, et cetera. Remember, we're all volunteers. Thank your volunteers, thank your donors. Thank your treasurers. Everybody is a volunteer. Um, and as we all said at the beginning, Terry and I are there to help answer questions. I just got another question when um, just now from another district wanting information. Um, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We are all volunteers, but we're all here for the same purpose, to raise money for the CART Fund to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Thank you, Michelle. We appreciate your our, uh, your time and we, we, we value your time uh, to help us in the CART Fund. Uh, Tiffany's gonna gonna email you sometime tonight or tomorrow uh, an updated uh, district chair position description. And you'll notice as you read through that, there's a lot of there's a lot of use of the word communicate and train. And we really want you to communicate with your district about the car fund. You are our educators. We want you to, to truly educate your district about what Alzheimer's is about and what the CART Fund is about. We recommend that you surround yourself with a committee. Uh, committees of one are tough, and a lot of you are committees of one. We recommend um, perhaps thinking about a club CART chair in your clubs to share the, the effort and to share the information. And along those lines, do you have a personal Alzheimer's story? And if you do, use that in your communication with your district. Uh, it's always better if the story is personal than if it sounds like you read it out of a book. 
And so if you have an Alzheimer's story, a personal Alzheimer's story, use that story when you're educating your district about Alzheimer's and about the car fund. Michelle asked a while ago, as the district chair, have you signed into the portal? Well, I'm gonna ask you the same question. If you have not, tomorrow's a good day to do that. Sign into the portal, absolutely. I tell you to do it tonight, but by the time we finish, you may be exhausted and don't want to mess with anything else related to CART. But first thing in the morning, if you've never signed into the portal, please do so. The portal is, is quite a machine. It gives you all kinds of information about your districts and about your clubs. And it will become a valuable tool to you if you use it. Um, Terry mentioned that we really want to encourage recurring donors for the CARC Fund. Um, if you've ever done any fundraising, you know that recurring donors really help the bottom line in terms of receipts for any kind of organization. And we want, we want to encourage recurring donors. Uh, as of this morning, we had 43. And so we want to increase that number um, into the hundreds of people uh, doing recurring donors. It's simple. Um, You'd be surprised how rapidly five bucks a month or 10 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month can build up. Uh, and you, uh, you can help us do that. I mentioned the word communicate. We really want you to develop a relationship with your district governor chain. They can support you immensely in terms of helping to encourage the members of your district uh, to give the card. And so get to know them, help them, help them to understand what we do and ask for their support. Um, it never hurts to ask. Uh, ask for their support. Lastly, we recommend, as Terry has mentioned, and as Tiffany's going to mention, that you communicate routinely with the clubs in your district. Michelle mentioned that that if you look at the report routinely and encourage your clubs to give monthly or quarterly, there won't be surprises in the end of the road a year. But on top of that, if you communicate routinely with that club, president, president-elect, president-nominee, CART chair for the club, you can help them educate their members about Alzheimer's, about the research we're doing, about the research we're paying for, and about where the CART fund is headed. We're gonna try this year to give you lots of information about where we're going, where we plan to go, where we've been, to try to help you have information to pass on to your clubs. And we encourage you to use that information uh, to encourage your clubs to give to the CART fund. Programs. As a CART chair, you're probably gonna be asked to come give a talk to a club. And if you're never asked, you need to encourage the club to ask you. Uh, you are a great source of information to give presentations to clubs about the card fund. And if you're uncomfortable doing that, then recruit somebody with a personal Alzheimer's story to do that for you. We would really like for the majority of the clubs in your district to have a card fund presentation every year. And we're looking to you to coordinate that with the clubs. Like I say, even if you're uncomfortable giving presentations, then recruit somebody to do so. There are lots of folks associated with the card fund that do really good presentations. And so we are looking to you to help us get into those clubs so the clubs can be educated about what we do. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Tiffany and let her um, talk a little bit about public image and then we'll come back a little while later. So I wanted to start with where you can find us because some of you may not know all of these accounts are even out there, but not only do I hope that you'll find them, follow them, like them, all of that, but that you'll share that as part of your presentation when you do go out and speak or when you're talking to people either via phone or in person or online. And that is that we use the hashtag, the cart fund, and we have a very active presence on Facebook and Twitter, and we have a YouTube channel. And on that YouTube channel is where you can find all of the videos from not only meetings like this, but more importantly, 
the presentations by many of our former grant recipients and current grant recipients, and you can share those presentations as well. And that would be something that if, for example, someone's speaker doesn't show up one day, or if there was an e-club or an online meeting, you could share one of those videos as an actual program, which would also help introduce people to CART. We also have a really good video on there called The Power of One that is a three-minute introduction to what CART is. And that is also embedded in the generic PowerPoint that we sent each of you. If you did not get it, let me know. I can share it with you again. But that is a, a PowerPoint template that you could take and create and make your own. You can add your story, as Rod was saying, and then you can use that when you make presentations. So that you know, I get asked to speak a lot. And right now, for some reason, a lot in my own district, even though they've heard me a million times, I guess it's because I'm new in this role. So my general practice is going to be if I get asked to speak because someone knows me, I'm going to reach out to that district chair and the district governor line and let them know when I'm going to be in the area. I'm not trying to take over for you, but if someone asks me because they know me personally or they know I'm going to already be in the area and it's convenient, I'm happy to share my story as well. But I would like for you to come and join me if you can. It's not that I'm trying to do your job. I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing mine as well. When it comes to public image, we do have a vice president of public image, Aaron Sines, and he is in Pennsylvania and he is going to be doing a lot of new graphics and design work for us. But and so you'll you'll start hearing from him as well. But one of the things that um, many people ask me on a regular basis is where do I get buckets or where do I get those cute little cups that I can put in my car or where do I get the jars that other people have used or where do I get the clear acrylic boxes? So these are two contacts that I want to make sure you have. If you currently need buckets, those are available from Johnny Hilton, who is our vice president of finance, and he is in Sumter and he will ship those out to you. Uh, and if you would like to purchase some of the small cups, these are stadium cups. They're very small. You can put them in your car. You can put them on your nightstand. You can throw your spare change into them. You can purchase those from a gentleman named Rich Harrison. He is in the Rotary Club of Little River, South Carolina. And he, uh, if you email him at that email address, he will send you a, 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 all the information that you need. We also have an order form for those. Our long-term plans are that we are able to eventually put all of this on our website and with one button, you can order what you need. Many of you have asked about cart pins. So the pins are being redesigned so that we stay compliant with rotary branding and because it's been a while since we've had a new pin. And when those are completed, you will be able to order those directly on your own, uh, directly from that vendor. We also do a monthly newsletter for, for CART. And as of right now, it is done through MailChimp, but that is transitioning over to what will be our new website soon. I know y'all are tired of hearing me say the website is under construction, but it is a lot more work than any of us anticipated. But we are very excited about how great it will be when it is completed. And when that is done, we'll be able to send our newsletter as an easy bulletin. For those of you who used ActiB already for your easy bulletin for your websites, you will be familiar with that and we'll be able to send that out. The beauty of our newsletters are that you can cut and paste even now from MailChimp or if you want something specific and you need it, let me know. But what I would like to suggest is that if you don't already know who your district's public image chair is, please get to know them. Let them know that you would like to submit something every month for your district newsletter. Find out what the deadlines are. Find out what the format is that they need. Maybe you want to put something in there quarterly about who's in the lead for the competition in your district. Maybe you want to put something one month with a link to one of the videos of the researchers. Maybe you want to include something about one of your club's uh, accomplishments this past month. But if you can get that in the district newsletter, that will continue to build momentum in your area about CART. On the same respect, I'm going to ask you, do you know who your district's DCO is? That is the District Communication Officer. If you don't have it set up already, Terry and Rod both mentioned that you can get a committee in DACTB of club cart chairs. And if you don't have that set up already, ask your DCO to help you get that set up and then get all of your club presidents to enter the names of their club cart chairs. And then you can communicate with each one of them with the click of one button, which will be much simpler for you than having to store them all in your personal email address. You'll be able to use the PMail templates. You'll be able to track emails and see if they're reading them or not, or if they're even being delivered. And if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to answer that question. Your DCO is probably also available as well. 
as Rod mentioned, we really want to have a real good presence in your district, not only as presentations and in the newsletters, but work with your district governor, as Rod mentioned, to build those relationships, to make sure that you have a booth in the House of Friendship at PETS or at the district conference. Some of us are available to come and help you if you want, but the ideal situation is that you and your team of volunteers in your community are able to help get that ha to happen. But we're here to help you with that. If you need a speaker for a district conference, please suggest now to your district governors that they look into getting one of our researchers to come and speak. Because the thing that we hear the most often is that that's what our donors, our Rotarians want to hear is where did our money go? What did we accomplish with the money that we donated? And if you would like contact information for any particular uh, researcher that you've heard on one of our YouTube channel presentations, Rod or I can help you get that and help you reach out to them and invite them to your district conference. Because people are asking us what is being done with the money, what are the results of that research, we are going to be implementing a brand new series starting later this month, and you guys will be hearing more about this at our monthly meetings, but it will also be in the DAC TV calendar. It is a lunch and learn series that will be held during lunch for one hour each month, and the guest speaker will be one of our previous researchers. So they will be providing an update on the actual research that they did, what they've been doing since then, and we're going to leave a lot of time at the end so that they can answer your questions. So um, I've been getting lots of questions about what have our researchers done, where is our money gone, and finally, I just wanted to mention our district card chairs meeting, which I know is not on the same night of every month right now, but we are trying to make it available to as many people as possible. If you miss one of those, we are recording them. We are putting them on our YouTube channel so that you can go back and watch them. And the agenda that we used last month seemed to work really, really well. So we're going to be continuing with that, having a very specific agenda with breakouts at the end. And then, of course, we will record the general sessions uh, and put those on the YouTube channel. We already have great speakers lined up for both August and September uh, with some topics that I think you guys are going to really enjoy. But I think it's going to be a really good use of your time to make sure that we're not repeating information over and over. So I think that's everything I have. I'm going to uh, pass it back to Rod at this point, and he's going to share with you um, what our grant selection process is like. Some of you already know this information. Contrary to some belief, uh, we on the executive committee do not pick the researchers that we give money to. Uh, we have a terrific research panel um, that is staffed by three eminent researchers who give of their time and they wade through all the applications and ask the right questions, questions that we don't understand sometimes, but they understand what they're reading and they ask the questions and they narrow the field down to what they recommend as the very best research projects based on their possibility of success. And so just a, a thumbnail, in the fall, we go out to every institution we know of in the U.S. that's doing any kind of Alzheimer's research. We invite those institutions to submit applications for our money. And so our research panel, which is currently made up of Dr. Alan Levy, uh, Dr. Carl Herup, and Dr. Julie Snyder, they wade through the information and they come back to us and say, here's the ones we would fund if it was our personal money. Because these are the ones we think have the best possibility of success. And we get to ask them questions about, well, why would you put this one ahead of that one? Or why would you choose these three instead of these other three? And they, they have reviewed the information well enough that they can justify their choices. And I've been I've been listening to these grant presentations for years upon years, and we have never deviated from their recommendations because we believe they are the best possible people to pick the possibility of success. And if you'll recall from May, when we heard our three researchers for 2022, I don't believe there was a single person in the room or watching by internet that was not completely impressed with the three choices. And we believe they have a good chance of success and we're looking forward to their reports. Uh, let me just uh, give you a couple of pieces of information in addition to that. 
Um, Dr. Um, Goforth, Gary Goforth, has been ramrodding this process for several years. And he has taken a process that was pretty much paper and pencil to an electronic Dropbox type process and really, really uh, streamlined the effort. And we commend Gary on what he has done for us. And if you see Gary, please thank him for, for his effort. Uh, I believe he is, he is a tremendous asset to the CART Fund. And we wanna keep him doing what he's doing. Tiffany mentioned that if you need a researcher for a conference or for a meeting, uh, let us know who you'd like to, to get and we'll try to get you contact information. Gary's also a, a, a source of information about researchers. He is in constant contact with lots of them and he can tell you who is a really good speaker and who might not be a good choice. And so let us help you uh, with choices of researchers. We really want to get the information out there about what we do and what your money is going for. Uh, it's been a proven fact that the more you tell people about where their money goes, the more they're willing to donate. And that's our goal this year, is to help you get information out to the folks who are going to donate uh, and get correct information out there. And we want to help you do that. Lastly, um, we have... At the last executive committee meeting, we, we, we shuffle the deck in terms of the regions. And so if you don't know your regional director, we want to introduce you to that person. Uh, and at our district chair meeting later this month, we'll talk a little bit about that in detail. Uh, it is, if, if clubs want credit for a particular rotary year, it is incumbent upon them to, to, to think in terms of what the calendar looks like. <laughs> Please don't wait till June 15th to send a check. Uh, Card Fund has the same problem Rotary National does. Lots and lots of people wait till the end of June, and there's just too much workload to get it all in by June 30th. So, and just an order of priorities, there. You know, we'd rather that we'd rather that we were not supporting the postal service with mailing these checks around. But even if we are, you want the checks to come to you, not to the cart treasurer, because what we're trying to do, if, if we can't get the clubs to do the work, we'd like, like to distribute it among ourselves rather than funneling it all into, uh, into one guy's mailbox. Uh, Michelle has helped me quite a bit with memorials and um, that people put in. Um, are you still doing that, Michelle? How is that going to be uh, handled in the future? Actually, I believe Tiffany's handing memorials now. So if it's in the portal, she will be the one responding to the family and the donor on that. Um, right. The donor, if it's imported in the portal, they'll get the automatic receipt via email. But I'll be sending the acknowledgments to the families. And, okay. you know, anything can be categorized as somebody could give you a thousand dollars from their IRA and make it a, a memorial if they want. So you, when right. you deposit that manually, you want to check all those boxes in the manual contribution. And just to be sure, those checks that are coming from um, institutions, you know, I had a, a governor say to me, he had checks coming for two years because they went to South Carolina and there's nothing on that check really to tell South Carolina where it is. So if you know that you have donors in your district, that are doing withdrawals, that are doing distributions, let them send you the check. Put, if they're just your address on it. Let them send because their person will be happy to send the check to your address. And then you can put it on their behalf. You can deposit it at the bank on their behalf and know that you'll be credited properly. About the the, the research part, and uh, you know, as, as as was mentioned, uh, you know, new ideas in research and, and that kind of progressiveness in the in getting the monies to, to researchers. Is there any kind of a, a, a report that, that, that can help in that information with the progress of, those, of that research? And it, it also, you know, is, are we looking for a, 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 an end goal here? Is, is it, you know, a, is there, are we looking for a cure? So the current website, which is, um, has some issues, but there is a place on there that says uh, re grant research results or grant results, I believe is what it says. So our researchers provide um, 
uh, an interim report to our board it's every eight months in their 24 month period that they get a grant and they are required to submit an interim report with a, a progress report, if you will. And that is what allows them to get the next installment of their check. Uh, we do not share that because that is somebody help me with the word. It is their material that is research and it's not for public knowledge yet necessarily. Proprietary. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. It's proprietary. Um, but right. when they do when they do finish their research at the end, we require them to give us a final grant report that does have information in it that we can publish. And that's what we put on the website. And those are on there. So it's going to look like it's a couple of years old because there were people that got grants in 2019 or 2020, but it's because they're just now finishing their research. Uh, but we do put those on there when we get them. Um, and there should be three to five every year that are being added. If you would like any of the older ones, um, we can I can pull those for you. But those are going to be transferred over to the new website as well. That's the other reason we're starting this Lunch and Learn. And uh, Rod mentioned Dr. Carl Harrop, who serves on our, our scientific review panel. And he was actually a grant recipient way back I'm sorry, I don't remember the year in front of me right now, but he um, he is going to be one our first speaker. He one of our speakers. So what we're trying to do is bring these guys back years later, because what we have found is that the majority of them use the research that they they discovered from their CART grants to apply for much larger grants, multi million dollar grants from NIH, um, the the from uh, the federal government, from uh, the Alzheimer's uh, Association, things like that. And Dr. Harrop is a great example of that. Uh, we we call ourselves seed money um, so that they can get enough research and get enough data that they can then apply for the multi-million dollar grants, which we're not able to fund. As for the end game, I'm going to let Rod answer that one. Um, as Roger Ackerman told me 14 million times when he was still alive, <laughs> we're in this to, for the long haul. Uh, our end game is to find a cure or prevention. And so we're, we're going to be around for a long time. And we already know uh, that there are multiple types of Alzheimer's. And so we, uh, we assume there are going to have to be multiple types of cures. Uh, so it, it, we're, we're going to be here for a long time, George. Um, I, would, I would like to say to, to everybody on the call that uh, we'll have a cure in two to five years, but I don't know that. Um, as most of our researchers tell us, we're making great progress but there's a piece of puzzle we hadn't found yet, and we're looking for it. And, and that's why we had some new research to find that last puzzle piece. But uh, to, to Tiffany's comment, um, when, the, when the final report comes to us from these researchers, which is two years after they get their first check, um, one of the requirements of, that we put on them is that that report can be published because we require them to share their information with other researchers, because uh, we don't believe one person is going to have the answer. George, I just want to make one comment. If you want to know how serious the medical community is about this, I just looked it up uh, about three days ago. There's over 2,600, 2,600 clinical trials going on right now for Alzheimer's alone, and therefore, um, uh, something to detect it, something to find it, something to slow it down. We have nothing at, at the moment. So we're, the medical community knows how, uh, how devastating this is going to be to the population if we don't find something. And we've been at it for 116 years and we've found very little. Appreciate your time. We seriously do. And we hope this was useful to you.